Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In today's video, I'm going to take you through five tips that are going to make your work process just a little bit quicker, smoother and easier. So let's take a look at those five tips right now. So for this tip, I'm going to show you how you can take your stretch markers and make the process of editing your audio infinitely quicker. Now, if you see any of my other videos, you know that I think stretch markers are one of the most powerful features you've got for editing your audio and making sure everything is aligned the way you want it to. But it can be time consuming to work through adding all the points in there and just editing things, especially when you're working with editing the transients, which let's be honest about it, for most purposes, that's going to be what you're doing. So I'm going to take this example where you can see I've got two identical guitar parts. And if we zoom in, you'll see that I'm not perfectly on the grid. So you can see I'm either just a little bit early or a little bit late, so I'm not bang on. So what I would normally do is go through and add in all the points on the transient markers, or on the transients, and then I would use that to fine tune things. But like I say, that's great if you've got two or three points, but when you end up with 30 or 40 points or hundreds of points, it gets very, very slow to do. So in the new version of Reaper, we've got a new little tool that allows us to really speed up the process of doing things like this. So I'm going to select this particular piece of media and I'm going to right click and I'm going to come down to stretch markers and we'll take a look underneath transient guides. So we have three options available to us in there and the one we're going to use is calculate transient guides for visible areas. So let's just use that one. Now you can use any of these three depending upon your purposes but let's just click on that and you'll see now that the selected audio starts to have some little dotted or serrated lines in there. If we zoom in a bit more we'll see a little bit better. And on each one of those transient points, you can see that we've now got these little green arrow symbols. So at the moment, they are literally just markers. They're not anything other than that. So we can leave them. They don't do anything. But once we interact with them, we will then adjust them to stretch markers. So you can see that if I just go over to this one, I can click and I can drag it over. And I can do the same with the next one and the next one and the next one until I got everything that I want on grid knowing that every single point on there is being pulled in from the transient. So if that's what you're working with, you're going to see that it's very, very quick to work with. So let's take this example above where you can see I'm quite a way out. So let's right click, come down to stretch markers, choose transient guides, and let's just choose calculate transient for visible areas. And you can see it does exactly the same thing again. So if I come down to this green two headed arrow, I can now just quickly fine-tune the audio to make sure everything is where it needs to be and lines up with the drums and with the transient for the other piece of audio. Much quicker, much easier. A great new function in Reba. Okay, so in this tip, I'm going to show you how you can change the way that the automation points on your automation lanes are actually being used. Now, by default, they're set as linear, so you can see that we draw a diagonal or a straight line between each of the points but you can change that quite easily. We can click on a point and then right click on it and we can come down and we can say set point shape and you can see we've got a range of different options in there so we can choose from square, slow start and end, by the way down to Bezier. Or if you want to select multiple points, you can select those with the right mouse button and you can see then each one of the points now gets selected. And what we can do then is we can right click on any of those points and we can say shape for selected points and we can do the same thing there so we can set these to bezier so instead of them being a perfectly straight line we'll apply a small amount of curve to them so you can see as i move those points around the curve will actually increase or decrease and change based upon how we actually position it so you can see we can quickly and easily change that so we can ramp it up we can use smoother curves as opposed to just being a dead hard line so that's a great way of setting up your automation point shapes. So as we know, media makes up a big part of working with Reaper. And when you're dealing with media and multiple parts of media files, you're going to find you're going to end up with crossfades when you link two tracks together. And you want to have times where you either want to put a beginning fade or an end fade or both to any particular media item. Now, if you've do, dealt with this in the past, you'll know that by default, when you come to the top right hand corner or the top left hand corner, we get the icon changed to this little fade icon, which shows us a curve that allows us to drag the fade in. So if I click and drag, you can see we now apply a fade to the end of this track or the end of this piece of audio. And by default, we've got a curved fade. We can easily change that 
as long as I've got this symbol showing up, so as long as I go over the fade line, I can right click and I can choose from a range of different predefined options. So I can choose any of the fades that I want and apply that to this specific piece of audio. So you can see we can ramp that curve up or we can have a linear fade. We've got a range of different options available in there. Now let's just say that you don't want that to be the default. We can change that very easily. So if we come up to the, the preferences menu in the top right hand corner, or we press control command P on the keyboard. What we can do is we can come down to project and we can say media item defaults. And you can see in there, we can set the default fade in and out shape and we can set the default crossfade shape. So we can choose any from the available options. So we can just click, drop that down. And let's just say we want to have an inverted curve and we want to set a different crossfade on there to a sort of bell type curve. We can say apply and that will now apply that to any new media. Now the thing to bear in mind is it's only on new files that you add. So when you create additional audio, anything that you create from this point on won't have that effect. So if I click OK, so any media that's currently part of your project will still keep that same original bell shape or curve shape or whatever was set up as your default. So this will only apply to new media items. Okay, so let's just say that we're dealing with recording multiple instruments at the same time. It can be an absolute pain to have to arm every single track that you want to record. So a quick way of bypassing that is simply come out to the first record button on the track that you want to work with. So let's just take this guitar solo left. And let's just say I want to activate all of the four tracks and arm all four of them at the same time. Well, the simple way of doing that is clicking and holding down the left mouse button on the first arm. And then click and hold that and drag that over all the ones that you want to arm without letting go of the left mouse button. Now all those tracks are armed and we can do the same in return. We can just click and hold, drag over all of the tracks and disarm them. A very quick way of multi-arming multiple tracks. So if you work with a lot of MIDI, then you know it could be time consuming to create a new track and then make a selection and finally insert a MIDI item. Well, there's a quick way of doing that. You can apply this to any track. It doesn't even have to be a MIDI instrument track. It could be any track. So let's just create a new track for this example. And what I'm going to do is I want to have a MIDI item that's a certain length. So if I hold the control on the PC or command on the Mac, you see my mouse pointer changes to a pencil icon. And what I can do now is I can drag with the left mouse button make a selection as long as I want it to be, let go, and there's a MIDI item automatically added for us. So we can just simply double click on that and start working with the MIDI. So a very quick way of simply inserting a MIDI item ready to start working for the desired length on any track that you want. Well, I hope you found these five tips for Reaper useful. I hope they're the kind of thing that you can speed up your work process by integrating those into your workflow. If you did find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you didn't enjoy the video, give it a thumbs down. But until next time, happy mixing.